Rock Guys would like to welcome Stephen Maz, better known as Maz. Hey, man, what's up? What's going on? Uh, not too much, you know, just glad to be on the phone with you, you know, chewing it up a little bit. Right, right. As long as, uh, as, long as you'll have me, I'm going <laughs> to be there. Cool, cool. <laughs> Back in 1985, SS Steel, uh, I think you were around age 16 and you did uh, the Jersey Circuit and uh, I guess Connecticut and Pennsylvania? Right. Well, we did some stuff in Pennsylvania. We did the Jersey Circuit. It was really, it was actually before 1980. It started in like 1979 wow. into 80, and then it lasted up until like 86 or 87. We did all the, all the big clubs that used to be around here and um, down in South Jersey. And, uh, you know, it it was good. You know, it was a it was a great time and everything. And then as it got into the mid-80s and some of the drinking age went to 21, everything changed a bit. And um, you know the money wasn't wasn't as be- as good as it was, and everybody wanted to make their own records, so that's what we all did. And uh, it was great. The band was great. Great people. Great singer. Jeff Merrill was a great singer. And uh, all the other guys that were in the band: Danny Betta, Donnie Fierro, Eddie Patey. Um, there was a few other guys in and out. Oh well, Joey Springer and Eric Farrell from White Tiger were in it for a little bit. And it went as far as it could, and we just realized that, you know, as after so many showcases and, and um, you know, uh, labels, you know, turning us down, that it just uh, it didn't happen. I mean, we did have a record out. It was on an independent label, but the majors didn't come step up to the plate, and before you know it, it was just too late, and we all had to move on. Right. So that's what we did. And then we went into, got into the into the 90s, you right. know, and uh, and from there... Went into a few cover bands such as Straight Face, which was very successful for five years. And from there, I moved on to. Uh, I got a call from a good friend of mine, Steve Brown, uh, from Trickster, uh-huh. who's all very good friends of mine. And uh, he, Trickster, was sort of, you know, uh, who knows what the term is, but, you know, the 90s were changing everything, and Steve wanted to do something and he put together a a whole package and the band wound up over time becoming called 40 foot ringo got a great album that came out with that and uh that was another period moved on right. and would you like me to continue down this like yeah, <laughs> on this yeah, calendar yeah, thing yeah, like, uh, i mean i get i got it'll just keep going it's like it'll <laughs> keep going and changing it's like it's like every, it's a, they're all like little sections of my life, little the little chunks of my calendar of my life with all this stuff. Right. And, what, uh, what about this out? Uh, this man called the Smoke. Oh well, that was in between that. Uh, I almost forgot about that. That was. Uh, oh, let's see. Yeah, before Forty Foot Ringo, and after SS Steel, uh, Trickster. Well, it was Trickster had their deal. Their management uh, company uh, put together a band and. Um, it was, uh, I was a guitar player. They had a guy named Ralph Woodson, who was the artist, the singer. And, um, Ken Mako was the manager. And we had Tony Senator on bass. And there was a few drummers in and out. Michael Mari, a couple of different people bounced in and out. And, uh, it wound up, we did have a deal with MCA Records. Um, a lot of money came our way. Over the course of a year, we spent a lot of money. Right. And uh, the deal, you know, it never it made the record, but they never uh, took it to the next level. And it pulled it up after like a year and a half. But it was really, really good music. I thought it was great. But at the time, you know, it was like everything was, you know, the 80s were coming to an end and the 90s were starting and everything was changing. And, you know, it was in a, it was a weird time. So, uh, but then, like I said, yeah, that's funny that you mentioned that. We sat, that was in between uh ss steel and 40 foot ringo that was right in between there and straight face and all that other stuff and um okay so then moving on from there right i mean the smoke that that music was never released right no nope i think i have believe it or not i have uh i think i have one cassette tape (laughs) somewhere i see it every once in a while when i'm rummaging through like uh you know, looking for some old music or whatever. Right. I see it once in a while. It's around. Right. Uh, you know, I'm sure somebody has the masters. Some of it was really good. It's, you know, I, I thought it was, you know, I, I thought it would have went a little further than it did. But like I said, right. the music business, you don't know what to expect. Things change. Or, you know, you could be the flavor of the week or, right. you know, it just changes so fast. You know, we all know that. Right, so. right. And then after that, did you go to Ted Poli's solo band? 
No, from there, I, Ted Poli solo band uh, started for me in 2010. Right. Uh, Ted Poli called my house, and I, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, me and Ted used to play in separate bands, but in the same clubs at night. Ted was a drummer since right. we were like 16. Mm-hmm. We were friends playing at the Soap Factory and at the Hole in the Wall and all the great clubs that used to be around. And uh, we would have a lot of fun. And then um, he moved on to a few things. He was uh, I did see him a couple times playing with Profit. And then he moved on to, you know, Danger Danger. And I really didn't talk to him much. And I probably didn't talk to him for about 10 years. Wow. And uh, in 2010, uh, I got a phone call. And uh, my wife, Barbara, who takes care of almost everything for me, um, said, uh, Ted's on the phone. And I said, Ted who? And she goes, I don't know. He just said his name's Ted. <laughs> so I, I thought for a second that I picked it up, and he was like, hey, Maz, it's Ted. And he says, uh, I was like, wow, great. How you doing? He goes, oh, he goes, you know, he goes, um, I seen this thing on YouTube with you playing at some festival over here, and, uh, you know, it was great. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And he goes, uh, he goes, yeah, it's pretty amazing. He goes, I figured you'd be dead by now. I couldn't believe I seen you on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so I cracked up and um he uh you know he talked he said listen um uh I need a guitar player if you're interested and I said uh absolutely I said just send me the music which I got like within a day or two and uh we went into the studio uh did a quick uh, rehearsal thing and um you know everything went fine so Ted was like okay we're going to do some stuff and I went back home and I worked on a lot more of the music and then he called me a couple of days later and said, do you have a passport? And I said, uh, no, I don't. He said, well, I have a guy who's going to get you one real quick because we're going to Sweden in like three and a half weeks or something like wow. that. And then I went to Europe with him. And since then, we did uh, three European tours, many local gigs, many gigs across the country, um, five or six monsters of rock cruises. We did the 80s Invasion Tour which was 30 shows in 32 days, I think, across the country with Bang Tango and Enough's Enough. And I don't know, I can't tell you how many festivals we've done. Right. You know, like we're, we're coming up, we're going to be doing some autism benefits, and we're doing 80s in the park in September, which is another festival down in Florida. And that's the way it goes with Ted. It's like, and we're, we're just, we've, we're still like, we're, we're definitely big kids, me and Ted. Right. You know, he's, he's a bigger kid, but, you know, I look up to him quite a bit, and he, um, but since we, you know, it's funny, because we can still, we still have that relationship when we were like 16 or 17, you know, just really enjoying what we do, we have a lot of fun together, right, and that's right. what makes it, makes it, makes it twice as much the, uh, twice as enjoyable when the, you just love hanging with the people that you're playing with, right, so it's yeah. great. I mean, Ted, Ted's uh, so impressive, at, at least to me, I, I look up to the guy, because like, uh, anytime I needed something, like, Ted, can you do a show for me? He'd be there. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, he's yeah, he's very good like that. He is very good. Uh, he's he, he likes to do things for people. He does like to do that. And right. uh, he's, if it's possible, he'll, you know, he'll take, uh, take a bullet for most people if it's possible. Right. I, but so, I'm, uh, I'm like sure. a lot of, like the, the autism benefit, you know, he does, uh, we... We do that, and he does a lot of other things, charity work. He does all that stuff with the uh, the animal shelters right. he does out uh-huh. in Pennsylvania. I know he does that, and, um, yeah, he does a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know, and he loves his toys. Guy. He loves his toys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he just bought me some <laughs> new trains. Yeah. I don't know if you know about that. <laughs> no, no, but I know he loves his toys. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's great. He's, like I said, we both... He's a, he loves trains. I love trains. I've had train sets since I was a little kid, and and he just, you know, I told him around Christmas time. I was like, you know, my uh, my locomotives don't work anymore. This or that or whatever. And I, I, you know, was just tinkering around with them to make them work. And he said, I'm going to try to get you something. And a, about a month and a half, or maybe two months ago, he he gave me a a, a bag with four um, engines in it. And said, here, you know, this is for you. And I was like, this is great. You know, I got, you know, these, like getting new toys. Right. And uh, and I tried them out, I think, last week or the week before. And I posted it on Facebook. I was playing with my trains. And, you oh, know, yeah, I saw that. It was great. That. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That, those, that's, that night I was, I was um, home, you know, and said, I want to see if the, uh, Ted asked me to see if those things 
worked, make right. sure they worked, and that there was no problems with them. So I figured, well, it was a good time to do it. So I cracked a few beers and played with my trains, uh-huh. and uh, and uh, yeah, I had a I had a good time with it. It was funny. Cool, it was fun. Cool, cool. Yes, he does love his toys, and I love I love my toys. He loves his trains. I love my toys, my cars. I love my guitars. Right. Um, he loves his cats. You uh-huh. know, he has cats. Yeah. I don't have cats. I have a dog. Right. And um, uh, but we uh, all in all. We have a lot of fun, yeah. and it makes it uh, makes fun makes for more fun. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yeah, the the thing I'd love to get from Ted <sighs> is that like King Tut, I think cassette uh, box. Did you ever see that at his house? No. Oh, um, oh, you've been to his house? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I've yeah. I was up his house this week, and I know what you're talking about. The it looks like the uh, giant coffin that stands up and yeah. then like like would open oh. yeah like it would be like in the tomb you know, like, it was like the, the mummy would be yeah it's a, he's got some amazing stuff at his house it's uh you know his collect his collectibles and stuff are just it's just amazing he, yeah. he knows uh he knows how to really have a cool collection of stuff he yeah it's interesting does. definitely does yeah I, we had a, he had the uh ted poley barbecue uh-huh. last weekend saturday night we were out there and we had a blast and he was you know doing his cooking thing and um the barbecue and he had a couple other friends over uh-huh. and uh just barbecuing away with uh you know seafood and steaks and uh he had uh, some other people some neighbors right uh, a couple the brownings from uh-huh. i think they're from massachusetts they right. came down they're friends of ours they came down and uh what a lot of seafood, lobsters, and stuff. It was cool, a pretty interesting cool. night. Yeah, it was yeah. great. I definitely admired him. Yeah. Yeah. So do I. Cool, cool. <laughs> okay, let's go on to move on to Pump City. Pump City. That's uh, one of my cover bands that's been going on since uh, about 2007. Uh-huh. Me, Dennis Zimmerman, Joey Springer again from White Tiger, and. Um, Dennis Zimmerman, Joey Springer, we've had numerous drummers. We had Tommy Coombs. We had we had, we did have up until a little while ago Thomas Frasteri or Tommy John. Right. Frasteri. Uh, he plays with Slipper and Wet. Uh, great guy. And who else is in Pump City? Let's see. Uh Sean Mars was also a member from Mars Needs Women. And it's just it's just a uh uh a you know, a fun cover man right. that kept very busy for a while. Uh, making some good bread and um, you know playing all the bars every weekend just gotta just keep doing it whatever you can do it's you know that's what it was Jersey Shore up here in the winter time you know whatever you whatever gigs you can grab and go out and entertain people was a lot of fun I don't know if you you probably never seen it but it was a fun band it was a really uh, really fun band tell me about uh, uh, you're also working with Billy Monroe yes that started about a year a year ago, last May, not this May, uh, last May, just before that, a uh, real quick rundown on how, how that all came together was um, there's a guy I know, his name is Pat Squalanti. He came to me and said, look, I got this dude. He's going to come out from retirement. Though he was you know, on a plane, but I can't tell you who it is. And I was like, oh, whatever. <laughs> you know. And he, got, he comes and he goes, well, it's, it's Billy Monroe. And I was like, oh, I know Billy from back in the day. Once right. again, the old Jersey club circuit. I used to go see him all the time. The guy was amazing. So we got together and um, we just started uh, doing little rehearsals, not rushing anything, no pressure, just jamming around, you know, a little bit. And um, then we wound up uh, doing a show in May of last year, went very well. And then pretty much, um, you know, it kind of like just backed off just a little bit just to like say, well, this is what we're going to do and this is what we got to do. And uh, unfortunately, a couple of changes were made and... Um, Richie Rano from the band Stars stepped up and he is now playing guitar with us in that band and once again it's Joey Springer you know um, playing bass right. and me playing guitar Billy singing and Tony Serbo from the Willies playing drums right. and it's, a, it's an amazing band it's more or less I wouldn't call it, you know, just a cover band. It's more than that. It's like a tribute to the 70s and maybe early 80s. Not nothing like the 60s, not anything like it. It's more like Aerosmith, Ted Nugent, Zeppelin, um, you know, some UFO. Uh, it's really a great assortment of music, even stuff like Jay Giles. Right, cool. And uh, it's put together very well. There's a lot of things that are crafted into this set. 
built, you know, the, even even the uh, this kind of like the wardrobe thing, the look of the band is really going for the whole '70s thing, and uh, it's going very well. We're actually playing this Saturday, July 15th. Is this Saturday? Yeah, okay. July 15th at the uh, little place up in Mawa called called the Mason Jar, a cool little place, and uh, we did a show uh, last two weeks ago at Rise in Lodi, big room, went very well. And uh, we're just going to, you know, just take it one step at a time and just keep rolling along with it. And, you know, whatever we can do to keep busy and, you know, keep the uh, keep the machine rolling, cool. you know, wow. that's what we do. Wow. And, uh, and uh, you know, and there, is, there is the, there always is that other thing that we do it for that we don't talk much about it, but it has to do with the money. Right, yeah. <laughs> we have to... You know, you gotta yeah. get something. You gotta get some money from all this stuff. So right. it's going pretty well. Billy's a, Billy is uh, he's a bit of an enigma. He's really yeah. uh, he really is a good guy. He's a, he, he's a uh, you know owns his own tattoo shop. Right. And um, he uh, is very smart, very quick witted, very good on stage. And he's still got his pipes, and uh, you know he, you'd have to come out. You can't can't explain it. You'd have to come out and see the guy to see what he's like. He's a right. A good performer, and with me and Joey and these other guys, Tony and uh, and Richie Randall behind them, it's a really cool thing. It's cool. fun. Cool, cool. Uh, so let's uh, talk a little bit about um, you know Ted and you and your support for autism. Oh, okay, absolutely. Well, uh, Ted, me and Ted do uh, we'll do uh, the uh, the uh, autism uh, tattooing for autism, which is run by. Uh, Tony Rodriguez, who has, they call him Tattoo Tony. Right. He has a shop yes, down in, uh, yeah, what is that? In um, By Sandy Hook. Uh, right, yeah. What is the name of that town? Highlands or something. Um, yeah, we go down there and do that. And um, whatever or other autism benefits, you know, Ted's always up for it. I don't really, I really, I can't tell you. Before I've played with Ted in this band, I don't know uh, if Ted did anything with autism benefits before that or not. Or maybe just because he, you know, knew that my son was autistic, right. or well, I don't really know. But whenever um, it comes about, or somebody sees that, he never. It seems that he never, you know, shies away from doing it. Right. So um, we always like to feel like this to do our part. It's not a lot to ask for, and right. Ted always steps up to the plate for it. I was you. As you know, like you've seen when we did that one at Mexicali, um, you were there. Right. I was there. Mike, you know, he came down and played, and, and he had, it was partially or mostly his idea of uh, why don't you have your son come up and play a song, you know, right. which uh, was thrilling for me to be on stage with my autistic son playing. His name is Jake. Um, he was playing guitar that day, and uh, it's thrilling, you know, it was great. Excellent. And, uh, of course, my son was thrilled about it. Now, you know, Jake, uh, Jake, you know, he has his needs, but as far as playing music, um, he's doing pretty well with it. Cool. Uh, you know, other things he doesn't do so well with, but as far as playing, playing music and enjoying music, he seems to dig it, Excellent. which makes me happy, makes him happy. So, right. And I, I, just want to, I just want to do another plug here on okay. I, I do have another son. <laughs> His name is Max, but he uh, he is your normal uh, son. He's uh, graduated high school, but he's uh, very involved in music. He right. plays uh, tuba. His main instrument is trombone, and he plays baritone, three horns, and he's going to college and majoring in music in September. Wow. And uh, I'm proud of that. So cool. just wanted to make sure. Everybody knows that. Right, yeah. Yeah, and Tattoo Tony, his uh, little uh, shop's called Under My Skin. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's a great guy, too, who helps out a lot uh, with autism and stuff like that. Yeah, so. yeah, he's he, yeah, he's very involved in that. And, you know, it's funny because be, before I did all this stuff, um, when I was in Pump City, the beginning of Pump City, Dennis, my friend Dennis Zimmerman, knew him. And Tattoo, we used to play at some place called... Uh, uh, I think it, uh, it was in Keensburg, I think. It was like one of these, uh, these uh, like, ocean bars. Right. You'd be out, like, facing the water. I can't remember the, what the name <laughs> of it was. But I, I can't remember what the name of it was. Um, but t uh, Tony used to come there sometimes. He'd come up and jam with us a little bit, you know. And I didn't really know him at the time, but I, I got to know him a little bit through that. And he's a great guy, really good guy. So, yeah. Well, I mean, I... 
I, I didn't get any tattoos there. I, got, I only got, you know, I'm not like Ted. I only got two, I only yeah. got two tats. I want to get two more, you know, but yeah. um, I'm, I'm a little squeamish. I'm not that, you know, I'm not the big burly guy sitting there getting tats. I get right. a little, I start to turn white when I'm getting the tats <laughs> and I get a little, my stomach gets nauseous and, right. you know, so it took, you know, yeah, I'm not that, there's certain things, needles kind of skeeve me out a little bit, but I can get through it if I really have to. Cool, so. cool, cool. Yeah. Wow. So, Maz, uh, you know, it was great talking to you, and, uh, you know, I wish you the best. You're doing a great job, uh, you know, keeping the Jersey vibe uh, alive, you know. Well, so, um, yeah, we we kind of live. It's funny, you know, um, uh, it, you know, who said that to, it, keeping the Jersey vibe alive is cool. It's a, it's a We all have our circle of, there's this Jersey circle of musicians that are always around, been around. There's some that are old, there's some that are younger, you know, right. but but they're all there and they all seem to go do their things, but they come back and they still want to, you know, we all want to be, you know, out there in whatever places right. or corner taverns or wherever it is, a VFW hall, anywhere, we want to be there, we play in front of people. And uh, actually, Michael from Firehouse, the drummer, told me, he goes, he goes, I always love Jersey guys because all they want to do is play. That's all yeah. he ever says to me all the time. Yeah, it's great. But anyway, it's sort of like the, uh, it is, it's a different uh, vibe with the, the Jersey thing, like you said. Right. We all just want to play. We want to get out there and just keep doing it. Cool. So um, I really appreciate you giving me the call, and um, I will uh, talk to you soon. And I owe you a little envelope uh-huh. that you will get in the mail. Okay, no problem. <laughs> with a, no with problem. A, with a couple little items in it for you. Cool, cool. And, Would you uh, like to send anything to the fans out there? Oh, um, well, just keep, uh, you know, I just I want to get out there and play in front of everybody I possibly can and entertain them. And if they watch me play guitar or see me play with Ted Poley or whatever other thing I'm doing, um, my goal is to entertain people and make them have fun. And cool. if they have fun and they're responding, we're all going to have a great time. I just love that's what that's what charges me up. Everybody having fun at the same time. That gets me going. Great. So that's about it. So I could say. Maz, before we um, conclude, uh, can you tell me any other uh, project you worked on? Well, I also uh, play uh, from time to time with a band called Off the Road from Pennsylvania, which is Greg Smith, uh-huh. of Ted Nugent, bass player of Ted Nugent, also bass player who played with Rainbow, played with Alice Cooper. Played with uh, Billy Joel, uh, Alan Parsons project. He's now touring with Ted Nugent for the past, uh, and been with Ted Nugent for the past nine or ten years. So when he's home, he has a band called Off the Road. He recruits uh, some, you know, musicians from around the tri-state area to come play with him for certain shows. Right. And uh, it's uh, you know playing a lot of good old time classic rock and roll. He's an amazing singer, and uh, it's a real fun thing. Usually, I'm playing with. Uh, Paul Del Bacchio also is the drummer. He also plays in the Ted Poley Band next to the bass player from Ted Poley Band, which is Pete Ruello. And one other thing I have to do that I do do, do do, you said do do, <laughs> anyway, is, uh, uh, you know, as far as mentioning the Trickster guys, I did do the PJ Farley solo uh, um, shows out in the Midwest. We did Rock and Skull, three or four shows out in Midwest. And um, I was... Uh, was privileged enough to be in his uh, his video cool. for uh, for the song "You Stick Out," and uh, and that's about uh, that's about uh, that's about it right there. Cool, cool. So um, got that in there. Uh, anything else? Um, I don't know. That's about it. That's yeah. about it. Okay. <laughs> Great. All right. Thanks a lot. For Been wonderful. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. <laughs>